Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and here we go again this is another current state of the game video I did one of these quite a while back actually in fact about six months ago maybe a bit longer when people were saying that with update 5.5 the game was about to die and well it didn't did it it carried on and now recently we've had the well how well can I say this the debacle of the ATGMs or the missile tanks however you wish to call them come into the game and that has also caused consternation within the community to an extent so much so that it's raised toxicity levels people calling it or them the cancer tanks people deriding players you're rolling out in them and it's even to an extent led to the stepping down of quite a famous youtuber um, who deal who basically comments on most of the tournaments issued by wargaming but is the game really in danger of going in the wrong direction and is Wargaming losing the plot and not listening to the community, their players, their customers, so to speak? Well, yeah, that's unbelievably tricky to answer. And the reason why I say it's unbelievably tricky to answer is because there are two sides to this coin. Firstly, there is our side, the player side. And sometimes our expectations are a little bit high and we generally look at these things from our own points of view without considering the wider remit of the situation now that's not a wrong or bad thing i mean we are at the end of the day the consumer we are at the end of the day the people that you know, put the food on the table in wargaming. Without the players, there is no business. Let's not beat around the bush here. But, and it's a huge, huge but, the game itself and the powers that be inside the game clearly have data on how their business progresses. And as much as it would be beautiful to think that we the players have a say in the business plans of what effectively is a multi-million dollar business is naive to say the least because as long as the money rolls through the door as long as the upward trend is there i.e there are players there are more players joining than leaving no business regardless of how what you think of them will change their business plan it's that simple they will only change their business plan when they see the numbers going down, i.e. The, the revenue goes down, more players leave than join. That is when businesses generally will start to listen. Now, as I've said, a lot of people are bemoaning the missile tanks. They really are. I mean, a lot of people are, are voicing their concerns about it. But look at this statistic here. This is from Blitzstars. And the T92E1 over the last 90 days has been played 4.2 million times. Whereas the Sheridan is played 2.3 million times. Basically, these tanks have been played 7 million times. That is more times than the other three tanks on that list combined. So the player base realistically is not rejecting these tanks for whatever reason okay they may be broken they may be op but when you start playing tanks this often as a business wargaming look at these figures and say well the player base are liking these tanks they really like these tanks because they're playing them so much so it's just a few dissatisfied voices because the majority clearly like the tanks and the figures say that. It's a simple fact, guys. 
And then they look at the figures like the win rates, and as you can see there, it's like 56% for the T92 and 54% for the Sheridan. And they say, well, these tanks aren't really having that much of an impact on the game as a whole, because, you know, with the amount of times they're being played, a 56% and a 54% win rate over 90 days isn't massive. When you consider that there are other tanks, and you can see the list above, I mean, the Tiger One's got a 55% win rate over the same period. So, whilst it is fair to say that there is discontent with the missiles, the flip side of that coin is there are people who clearly like the missile tanks. And that's the thing. You know, and, and because the tanks have been played so much, the message that's getting back to the business is uh, we don't understand the concerns here. People really like the tanks. And because they really like the tanks, why would we change them? Okay, we need to nerf them because our data says they need to be nerfed, which it does and which they're doing. So is it therefore correct to say that the game is sort of gone into a direction whereby it's doomed because of these missile tanks? Well, possibly not. And then we come on to other matters. We're still facing the debacle that was 5.5. And, I mean, to me, the missiles tanks notwithstanding, 5.5 was by far the greatest change to the game parameters than, than ATGMs. And I say that because now you're getting people grinding and getting into those upper tiers without learning the basics of the game and generally spoiling the, the top tiers which which is a concern because you know when you when you've played x amount of thousands of battles over x amount of years um you in you expect to roll out in a tier 10 um because that's the top tier and you expect the people in that tier to be of an equal experience to yourself but that's not happening anymore you know, i've seen people with three four hundred battles in that tier i've seen i've seen people who have no business to be in that tier yet because they've not learned the game but that's an impact of 5.5 and you know unfortunately war gaming are not gonna roll back the clocks and change that so it's here to stay now you either think it's a good thing or a bad thing personally i think it's a really it was a really bad move it was detrimental and it is having that kind of impact on the game because it screws up the matchmaker and it it you know it, it takes away the fact that is it purely skill based now no no it's no longer just skill based regardless of your skill level if the matchmaker shoves you in a team with people who've got you know no experience and are pretty clueless in their tanks then you're doomed because the matchmaker and i've seen this it's happened to me the matchmaker may put you in a team of completely clueless new players against a team of very experienced top players and in in those circumstances you're just never going to win it's just going to be a whitewash and it does overflow the matchmaker to the extent that the matchmaker really does struggle. So 5.5 is a problem, uh, in my opinion. The trimming down of the tech trees, the making it easier to do the grind is a concern as a player. But then I have to look at the flip side of the coin. And again, Wargaming see that maybe they're getting more players onto their servers. And as long as more players join than leave they think they've made a good decision that's just basic economics it's how it works so yes we do have people leaving the game but you do have people you know there, there are people leaving the game for all different reasons but there are more people joining the game than leaving and therein lies the dilemma because whilst more people join than leave wargaming are not you know, in a position to change anything. Why would they? Then we move on to another one of my bugbears, premium tanks. 
Now, in my last State of the Game video, I mentioned that there were far too many premium tanks going on sale. And back in the day when I first joined Blitz in 2014, you were lucky to get a premium tank every six or so months. Now, you're lucky to get a premium tank every six or so minutes or so it seems. And the game is now being flooded with premium tanks. And again, from a business perspective, that's a good thing for them. Wargaming are going to continue to do that because people are going to buy them. And if people buy them, it increases their profit. If it increases their profit, it's a good thing. But as a player and in the community, the amount of premium tanks is just ridiculous. Because what you're doing is you're now getting these new players coming in. You're overinflating their egos because they play bots for the first 100 or so games and then they get their nice 68, 70% win rates and then they take that out against players you know, with equal battle counts for the first X amount of 1,000 battles or whatever it is, which again, massages their win rates after all. you know, They don't have to worry about camo, so they don't know how to use bloody camo. Um, so they don't understand the mechanics of camouflage and staying in cover they they have no access to training rooms so they, they they can't work out how to use the bloody tank and um you know generally it's just a, it's just a bugger's muddle down there in the lower tiers if you're a new player but you've got your 70 percent win rate after your 200 battles say why can't you buy that shiny new premium tank because you're ready man you know, you've got massive win rate. You're, you're fantastically brilliant. Why can't you buy the premium tank in tier 8 and roll out? Well, there's no reason why you can't. And this is the thing. You're, you know, the game has changed so much that it gives players this false sense of security. Whereby they think, they actually think they are good when they're not. Because, you know, unless they're a re-roll. <clears throat> but a lot of them are not re-rolls, funnily enough. So you get this situation whereby, well, you know, when I was, you know, I've got my 70% win rate in my low tiers, running straight forward into the enemy without cover and then blasting everything in sight worked to get me to my win rate. It's going to work in tier 8. And it doesn't work in tier 8. And you generally find they get slaughtered first and then spend the rest of the time bemoaning the rest of the players and I just say it I've said it then I say it now selling this many premium tanks is just ridiculously daft it really is stupid because whilst it may bring you money it hurts the game and it sows discontent throughout the game and the thing behind premium tanks gets so bad that decisions like sticking the Shinobi, actually it's not the Shinobi because it doesn't come with a camo, the China Kai, a tier 5 tank, into crate containers, whatever you want to call them, drop boxes, with a 3% chance of dropping, is just mind-boggling. It really is mind-boggling. But the fact of the matter is, no doubt... People drop their money to get that stupid tank, which is rubbish. Okay, it's got broken credit coefficiency. But, Christ, guys, it's a tier 5 for Pete's sake. And, you know, the credits you're going to get from a tier 5 game are nowhere near the credits you're going to get from a tier 8 low game. So, uh, it just boggles the mind. And then, on top of all that, we have... Battle Pass, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but people can see warning signs and they see that, you know, if this is a success, then will they introduce it more and more and will it have an impact on the game? Well, from what I've seen from Battle Pass at the moment is it's not a bad thing. It, it, it looks interesting. And, you know, if you have to spend a little bit of money and get some stuff back, then so be it. However, I have to agree, there are some warning signs there that if this is successful, 
will wargaming change the parameters of the game and, and move in another direction? So, you know, there are concerns. Of course there are. But all this, all these issues, are they killing the game? Well, in a word, no. The game is not about to die. And the reason I say that is because whilst we, in our areas, you know, in our small communities, etc., etc., may see discontented people, disenfranchised players, people being annoyed, etc., etc., the facts and the figures actually stack up the other way, I'm afraid. There are still 67,000 people near as damn it playing on the Russian server. Almost 20,000 people playing on the EU server. Almost 5,000 people playing on the North American server. And just over 4,500 people playing on the Asian server. So has it had the effect whereby the game is losing people? Well, to be honest with you, the Russian server is slightly down and so is the European server. But there is always reasons for that. And, you know, we saw a spike after 5.5 downwards. And initially, when the ATGMs were first introduced, there was a downward spike again. But that spike has steadily gone back up again. So the game is not in danger of dying anytime soon. However, wargaming realistically does need to do something. It is clear that they are not talking wholeheartedly to their community. Relying on just basic facts and figures without listening to your customers is not a good business tactic. And it does get to the point where you start seeing scenes that we saw yesterday, which, oh, what can I say? I mean, yes, it's good that people come together to either a show support and you know raise their concerns but not in such a childish manner as some of the things that we saw and because that does no good for anybody it does no good for anybody at all and the message it then sends out is well one of the reasons why we can't talk to the community is because the community is not mature enough to talk to and unfortunately, you know, things like yesterday on Wargaming's Discord servers tends to sort of reinforce that point, which is a damn shame. But, I get back to the point, you know, is the game in any danger of dying? Well, no, not really. It's in danger of alienating and disenfranchising a majority of the player base, potentially, especially the... Um, the more veteran players and uh, that's never a good thing and wargaming need to somehow find the line that pleases all but again you are oh, how can I say this you're fighting a corporation that for all intents and purposes their facts and figures say they're doing nothing wrong and therein is the thing now a lot of people may turn around and say ah but you know you're in the pocket of wargaming and i'm one of one of their biggest critics funnily enough and where i think they've dropped the ball i will say guys they've dropped the ball and i've said that with 5.5 i've said that with the amount of premiums i've said that with lots of things i get no benefit from um, arguing wargaming but I too am a gamer just like you. I, I don't get anything from Wargaming guys. I don't get any special treatment. Um, I don't get any payments. I don't get any in-game goods. I don't even have a press account. You know, every game, every, every tank I review, I have to buy and grind it just like you do. And there are many, many things that annoy me with what Wargaming do. But I'm also realistic and I'm also fully aware that as much as we would like to think that we as the players have a say business will come first I'm afraid and 
that's just a harsh reality of the situation. And we have, as the customers of Wargaming, have a choice. Continue to be customers or not. And that's really what it boils down to at the end of the day. And I don't see people leaving en masse. Which means that the majority of the player base is quite satisfied with what they've got. They may not be 100% satisfied. But they're generally satisfied because people are still playing. Anyway. That has been my current take on the current state of the game. Sorry, it's been a longish video, but hey, it deserved it. I've been Fujit. By all means, comment, like, and everything below. Oh, look, flying tanks. Flying tanks is always a good thing. If you've got any decent replays, send them to me, fujitblitz at gmail.com. If you're tempted to subscribe, be tempted more and press the button. It's a lovely thing to do. Um... I think we've lost a valuable resource with Rolling Swarm deciding to step away from the game, to be honest with you. Um, I think he is an invaluable resource, but it's his choice, guys. And whatever brought him to that decision, it's his choice at the end of the day. And I, for one, will not second guess why he, he's made the choice that he's made. No doubt, and I hope this, he will continue to make content, albeit on a different game. So until the next time, really, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because, you know, really, that is what it's all about, guys. Having fun and being happy. Flying tanks! You never get bored of flying tanks. Well, I don't. Crap ping. <laughs>